All right, man. There are three surprise standouts at Detroit Lions training camp, according to Brad Bierman of the fan side. Uh, let's talk about it. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and the subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications, increase the chance get notifications. We go live or drop the video. So, um, yep, they've been in pass for a few, for a couple days now. Excuse me. Today, they, uh, that fourth field, uh, holding a, a little open scrimmage out there for the fans. And then after this, I think the fans are uh, not allowed <clears throat> back, you know, at training camp or back with the Lions until uh, until preseason. Next Saturday or Friday, they play the Atlanta Falcons. I think I'm right. So, I mean, so then, you know, stuff going to get really nitty, get down to the nitty gritty, you know. Um, then you're going to start seeing them uh, – you know, really start to, you know, you hear some things from the media open portion, but really it's going to start to get kind of private. But uh, let's talk about what Barry had to say. He said, through nine days, Detroit Lions uh, camp practices now. These three players have surprised, have been surprised standouts. Detroit Lions completed the full week of training camp practices, and Friday was day nine of overall work. Of course, one of the big things Hoover and Robert Lions camp this year is HBO NFL cameras with the premiere episode of Hard Knocks coming August 9th. So that's what Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday, my bad, right? Yeah, Tuesday. But of course, the one big thing hoovering over the Lions camp, okay, right See, the organization has embraced uh, the attention the show will bring as energy from the coaches down to players have been good because they already told them, bro, y'all, y'all, we lose the money. We got to do something to win money. You know, we don't win, so let's do something else. Bears all haven't been. Uh, that many uh, obvious disappointments in terms of performance so far in camp, training camp. Receivers, uh, Quintez Seaver's leg injury was a down moment, but he appears to avoid a significant injury. But there have been some surprise standouts. Players vie for jobs. These three players, uh, in particular, stand out uh, as standouts so far in training camp. Jamar Jefferson, the head of head, uh, head coach Campbell, have pushed. The importance that the Lions second year players uh, make a leap this year. He specifically mentioned Jamar Jefferson as the second guy who has gotten noticed during the first full week camp. Jefferson showed some promise in the small sample work as a runner last season, averaging 4.9 yards a carry with two touchdowns and 15 carries, but failed to do enough to warrant more, particularly on the mental side, as he only suited up for seven games without having an injury to sideline him. Uh, Jefferson's best path to the roster spot is on special teams, which he sound ready to embrace early this offseason, heading towards the first preseason. Y'all lost August 12. So far, so good for the uh, Oregon State standout. Uh, Jared Goff is number two, which to some people will be some uh, shocker. Um, I like this interview with uh, the pivot. I'm going to talk about that. I haven't particularly uh, finished it yet, but you know I'm going to get there. Um, said Jared Goff. He says, what's the difference a year makes? By all accounts and all evidence, Goff is far more comfortable and more a lot more confident in the second training camp. As Lions, he's taking ownership of the office as a leader and starting quarterback. Shouldn't his teammates are noticing? Starting in OTAs, I remember coming. I came in and talked to the OC, and he's like, "You know, Jared, Jared's been in here and already getting the playbook down, digesting the playbook because he wants to know every single thing that we got going on in the offense." He wants to know whether we need to bump the point on this. Um, every single alert, whether it's you know unblockable free safety or play side safety, like uh, he's he's trying to get everything down. Run game, checks, pass game, checking the routes, and out here the first you know week, four or five days of practice, you see it. He comes up to the line. If we have an alert play, he just alerts it right away because he already sees it. Um, that allows us to play fast. That allows us to get up on the line, the line of scrimmage. So he's he's helping the entire offense. By just taking, he's taking a ton of ownership of it, um, and you know he's out there throwing dimes. You know, we know he can throw those dimes, and you know we we, we get excited that we you know if we give him time, we know good plays to be made. So uh, he's taking a lot of ownership to be able to come up there, run the show. I got it. Don't even need anybody to make any other calls. I'm, I'm gonna run the show. Um, and it started in OTAs. I remember talking to Ben about that the first day, and then we see it through OTAs. Then when it's full speed out here, you see it. It was like, hell yeah. Like, we need that. We need that. We need we need every single guy at their position to know exactly what they're doing, what the checks are, how to um, accomplish your assignment on the checks. Um, so I'm excited for him. 
I'm excited for. All right, so you hear it, you know, you hear it, you hear it, you hear it. Uh, we'll see if it translates to the game. And if it do, and he really making that jump, then um going to be a big contract in his near future because Brad Holmes really like him as a, as a football player and seems to love him as a player. So if he can make that jump, then, you know, hopefully it ain't fool's gold. And if he, he can get Jared Goff balling, Ben, ben Johnson, we don't know if he's going to call the plays yet, but if he can get golf balling, he probably not going to be in Detroit too much longer. He's probably going to get a head coaching gig, you know, pretty soon. So, you know, he got a lot on the line as well, too, but we don't know if he's going to be particularly calling the plays. Dan Campbell said he's been doing a hell of a job as OC, but I didn't heard that before. All the hype about Lions camp, reading it from the free press, you know, that's before they had uh, – you know, uh, ESPN all over the place or, or, you know, whatever. It was more about reading it in, you know, in the paper and all that. So, you know, we're going to see. we going to see. Because I didn't, I, didn't I didn't heard them, you know, hype up the Lions a lot of times before. Um, and then get to the regular season, you like, you know, you know what. But if, when they do joint practices and you hear Jared Goff doing good in joint practices, I think that would be, that'd, that'd, that'd be a good sign. That'd be a great sign. So we'll see him preseason if that translate. Um, him and DJ Sharp didn't start to build a nice connection. Is the rumor? Um, so yeah, they started to build a real nice connection. So you know, we we gonna have to wait and see. We gonna have to wait and see. But you know, apparently Ben Johnson probably Taylor making it stuff to uh, Jared off like him, but that's the jump they need. That's the one part they holding back in. Holding back is the quarterback position. It's the most important position in football, and a lot of fans still underrate the position. You know, so so you know, something to look at. But like I said before, if he make that jump, pretty safe to say most of y'all, uh, uh, most of y'all uh, predictions will be coming true. They will be true because once you get good play from the from the quarterback and they get solid play from the offensive line, which we expect in stellar play from the offensive line, you know, and they got weapons, you know, they 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 should be rolling. They should be rolling without a doubt. So, if that if that really happened and Jared Goff really standing out like that, it's gonna be good. It says not a secret how Goff lacked a good connection with former offensive coordinator Anthony Lynn, and that his connection with new offensive coordinator Ben Johnson is far better. Johnson's making a priority to get uh, the best uh, Goff has to offer. Even looking back with Goff as some old Ram fan this offseason, some Lions fans will certainly say, "Let's see it during the season." And of course, he looks good right now. To chalk up golf as over overly uh, positive training camp storyline, but a ton can absolutely be set during training camp and golf's projection a totally different vibe this year. So we we'll see. We don't get along with somebody, and it seemed like you know Anthony Lynn let him just you know do him, and maybe that maybe that wasn't the right approach. Maybe that maybe that wasn't the right approach. He let him do him, and you know then you know. So I feel that he threw him under the table. So um, third and foremost is defensive end Austin office slash outside linebacker Austin Bryant. It says Bryant has some, got some notoriety for being part of the a fight during Thursday practice, which as the Lions added a uh, defensive line talent this offseason might push him onto the wrong side of the roster, but if he wasn't already there. But Romeo, of course, uh, Achilles and jo uh, rookie Josh Pascal's hernia surgery on the PUP list. 2019 uh, fourth round pick has been working primarily with the second team defense. He's been making the most of his opportunity. Head coach Dan Campbell says, "Quote: He's always been all out all the time. That's what I appreciate about him. I really feel these last two or three days he's begun to grow, grow here in Trent Camp. You can uh, feel him coming on. He's been pretty disruptive. He's using his length. I like where he's at." He's always been uh, all out all the time. 
And that's what I appreciate about him. That was one of the first things I noticed about him, AG and myself, when I was watching film when I took this job. I'm like, who is this guy? He goes in the game and just goes all out, you know? And uh, I know this, and you're talking about a defense, man. That's got to be the starting point, just high effort. Uh, they lay it on the line. So he's always been that way. But I really feel like these last two or three days here, he's begun to grow here in this camp, man. You can feel him coming on. Um you know, he, he's uh, he's been pretty disruptive. He's using his length. So, I like where he's at. So, you're, I mean, that ain't really him. His production ain't been the problem. You know, it, it's been his, his ability to stay healthy. That's been his problem. You know, so, you know. That's been his problem. So, health. That's you know, there ain't too much more to put 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 on it. If he if he can stay healthy, then you know that that's it. That's it. And you know he's a hell of a special teams player. So that's why that's why he gonna that's why he gonna that's why he gonna be around. That's why he he gonna stick around because he can play special teams. Block, I think he blocked a couple kicks before. So a lot of Lions fans have, have been you know hyping him up for years, and he he plays really really great, well in spurts and then get injured. It ain't like he if he can be healthy shit he might be a Pro Bowl caliber player. He might not need Aiden Hutchinson, but he simply just can't stay healthy. And that's it. That's the bottom line. It says Kyle Minicky of the Mim Lion used the term violence to describe Brian has done so far at training camp, leaving the one, uh, uh, leaving out the punch he threw at offensive line, uh, tackle Dan Scarrow on Thursday via Justin Rogers, Detroit News. Uh, Brian is embracing his battle for roster. Quote, I think it's a process, Brian said. Quote, man, look, we're just a week into camp, so nobody's made the team yet. The roster is not set. We haven't played a preseason game. So, man, I'm just taking it day by day, enjoying the process. Romeo Cora and Pascal both possible to stay on the pub list until the season. Ryan is doing what he needs to do to move towards securing a spot on the 53 man roster. The rest of the camp and upcoming preseason game will be a more proven ground. Let me take a better. It's just him being injured. That's it. He can play. If he didn't get injured, dude, dude, to be a certified pro bowler. You know, so it is what it is. So as long as he stay healthy, that's all you you he need to do. It. He outstanding special team players. He should make the team bar none. That shouldn't even be a topic, but as long as he stay healthy. But hey, let me know what you girls and guys think. Check out the Detroit Lions Talk playlist. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. That subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Appreciate the chance to get notifications. We go live or drop the video. And then if you want to support the channel, cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313. Venmo CJ Good 313. PayPal link in the description. Appreciate the love and support. Let me know what you girls and guys think in the comment section. Um, Shout out to Detroit Lions Talk Playlist. More videos like this. Peace.